Thank you, Brian. For millions of John Lennon fans, this day two years ago was the day the music died. The day a deranged assassin brought an end to John Lennon's life and to an era. Today, Vic Miles takes a look back at that day and at John Lennon. We go live to him now outside the Dakota, at Lennon's home, and the place where he was killed. Vic. Thank you very much, Roland. We're across the street from the Dakota right now, where about 300 people who remember John Lennon are, are out here and were surprised about two hours ago to receive 100 free cups of coffee sent to them by Yoko Ono. And little Sean himself came down, escorted by his bodyguards, and they were, he was giving out T-shirts. On the T-shirts were emblazoned, It's All Right. That's Yoko's latest album. It's been two years, doesn't seem like two years at all. It's hurt, it still hurts a lot. I think last year, last year we couldn't come down because last year it was still too new. Yeah, it hurt too and much It hurt too much year. to even listen to the songs, to even come anywhere near here. The stately Dakota off Central Park, where he and his family chose to live, where he was killed on December 8th, 1980. The flowers still come, the people do too, along with some of the feelings that Lennon left with us. John started to talk about peace and everything. I'm a very peaceful person, I guess. And it just meant a lot to me. And, and for him to die like he did really hurt me a lot. Yet the senior side of events continue around Lennon's murder. Reports are that earlier this year, Yoko Ono was receiving old Beatle albums with bullet holes in them. Son Sean still needs a bodyguard escort to and from school. Mark David Chapman had been stalking Lennon for months getting an album autographed barely 24 hours before he cut down the man he called his idol, five bullets in the chest. Lennon's last words, I've been shot. He died within seconds. Doctors at Roosevelt Hospital emergency room declared him dead on arrival. I grew up with the Beatles and, you know, he was the last person I would ever think would die in my arms would be John Lennon, you know. The news of Lennon's murder spread quickly. Devotees of his music and lifestyle began to gather almost immediately on the sidewalks outside the Dakota. A trickle soon became a flood of his admirers who stood soaked by a freezing rain, numbed by what had happened. with the rest of the Beatles came out of the slums of Liverpool, England and were eventually credited with inspiring change in a whole generation during the 60s. They pushed convention aside with disarming whimsy. John thought of the name Beatles and he'll tell you about it now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, just, it means Beatles, isn't it? You know, if that's just a name, you know, like shoe. <laughs> Central Park two years ago, three days after the murder. Thousands swarmed into the park's sheep meadow to pay tribute to Lennon. The 10 minutes of silence his widow Yoko called for was seen and heard round the world. Central Park today, the section renamed Strawberry Field, where the Lennons walked often. His widow, now the head of a vast financial and recording empire, released for media usage an excerpt of her new album today under the same cover as her statement, marking this, the second anniversary of his murder. We'd like to say thank you to all the love and praise sent to us, which helped us through the hard times. And thank you for loving John. Let's have a good year, and we love you. His music, mystique, and memory being remembered, commemorated here tonight in front of the Dakota on Central Park West. Back to you, Jim.